to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sue of Bend and Stretch with Sue, and I love to make videos where I feature yoga practices, Pilates practices, I even like to share some health and wellness tips too. Now, in today's video, I am bringing you a yoga practice that I did with some of my students live via Zoom a few weeks back. Now, if you have them, grab your yoga props, such as yoga blocks, blanket, and a strap. If you don't have any of those, a couple of cushions, a blanket, and even a belt can help to facilitate the poses so that they're much more enjoyable and comfortable for you as we move along the practice. If you have it already, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe and give me one of these if you like the content, it really helps the channel and be sure to hit the notification bell so that you'll know when I upload new content and you can check it out and check me out in the next video. Namaste. And with supported fish, uh, sometimes if uh, either the block is too much between the shoulder blades, uh, you can always uh, use a rolled up blanket, kind of creating a roll with it, which makes it a little bit smaller and may make it more comfortable for you to stay there for the extended period of time because we'll be there for five minutes. So um, making sure that you're as comfortable as possible and as we begin, we're just going to come right into the practice. So we'll use the time where we're here as a, an opportunity to start into that intention setting and allowing the body to start to respond by opening up and allowing yourself to place the head comfortably. So if you need some support for the back of your head, uh, that's also a good idea to make sure that you're honoring um, through the cervical spine. You don't wanna feel like you've got excessive compression in the cervical spine by having the chin pointed up too high. H however, if it feels good for you to do that, you'll just wanna make sure that the neck stays not really nice and long if you do let the head fall back. That's a great throat chakra opener. With the arms wide open, you may also wish to bring your, um, your soles of your feet together and that will help to um, bring more length right from the hips all the way to your collarbones. And it will also bring some, some more stretch, more depth to your pose in um, the hips across the pelvis as well. So as you take your time to settle in here, our first pose of the practice this morning, closing the eyes as you feel ready to and Letting your attention begin to move inward. Tuning into your breathing. And with the end, it's always important to have a breath pattern that is soothing, it's comfortable, and that's going to be your guide as well as the sensations in your body as to how your body's responding and also how you should or maybe shouldn't make adjustments. As we come into the practice, colder through the muscles, through the joints, especially the joints, the fascia, which we're also targeting that encapsulates all of the joints and our muscles. It's a really tough, strong tissue. So we wanna give ourselves the time and the patience to allow 
put any opening. Now, if you do find that there's too much uh, stretch through the front of your pelvis, and too much pulling maybe in the inner thighs, perhaps you even feel it in the knees, you could use your blocks here as some support underneath the legs so that you don't start to create a, a response in the body where it starts to resist rather than allow. And if that's still uncomfortable for you, by all means, go ahead and simply stretch out the legs into a long position. Making sure that your back is feeling well supported again, what you should be on the lookout for are sensations of pinching, uh, any sharp pain is always to be avoided. It's always a signal to readjust and come out of the position. So rule of thumb is that if you come into the pose more conservatively, rather than coming to your edge as you set yourself up, you're able to remain there <clears throat> for the duration while we're here. If you come in too aggressively, it's just going to get way too much and you'll have to come out of the pose. So a lot of the times also, it's a matter of experimentation. So we've got about another minute here. Experimenting and the more you practice again, the more you know your body, you know what you may need to work on. So that you can more quickly adjust and find the place for you to settle into the position. Focusing on your breath is always a great way to keep yourself present. your feet in or bring your knees together if you still have the soles of the feet together and just let them fall to one side as you support yourself onto the forearm and from there you can move your support out of the way and bring yourself onto your back so from here we're just going to give ourselves a nice release it's always a a good idea after back bend to come into a little bit of spinal twisting. So we're not here very long. We're just going to let the legs kind of sway. You might pause a little bit longer just to allow gravity to help you into that twist as you let the knees fall to one side. Taking your gaze in the opposite direction is also going to be really helpful to create that release in the low back and in the hips. To bring it back to the center and reposition your spine to neutral, bring the knees into the body here. And we're going to move into our next pose, which is called um, Stir Up. It's in Yang, it's known as um, Happy Baby. So taking the, the knees apart first and then bringing the ankles over top of the knees. Now, you can, depending on your flexibility, if you have a yoga strap, you can bring it across the soles of the feet. If you have difficulty reaching your feet, now option to take a hold of the inner arches, maybe the outer arches, or even wrapping your 
peace fingers, your yogi lock around the big toe is a good option. You can also hold on to the ankles if that's as far as you can comfortably reach or simply wrap the, the uh, forearms, the wrists kind of around the back of the knees. You want to try to keep your ankles above your knees if possible and as you settle in here, wherever you find your home and being most comfortable, try to allow your lower back to release toward the mat as well, so you're feeling well supported. Now you can always slide a blanket maybe underneath that um, low back area, the base of the pelvis, if it is a bit of a struggle for you to have um, the legs in this position and you find that your back is kind of pushed up and it's creating a lot of pulling, don't be afraid to use those props to support you in the way that's going to make this the most comfortable possible. So as we allow the breath to link with the subtlety of sensation, or maybe it's not quite so subtle. You allow yourself to move into a more relaxed state. And yin yoga really lends itself so beautifully to a meditative practice. So that you can go deeper within you're just focusing on the breath. Mantras are always useful. Or just listening to the sound of my voice can also be a way to bring you back. So as you, you know, as I chit chat, you might find that you hear some of it, some of it you lose. But from time to time, it brings you back to being right here, right now. And that's really what we want to cultivate because we have a tendency to live in the past or in the future, <laughs> spending very little time in the present moment. Let yourself continuously move back into the present, even as your attention wanders, whatever the intent is for you today draws you to the mat. bringing the awareness back to that intention throughout the practice is wonderful for keeping you here right now. There'll be plenty of time later for whatever distracts you, whatever the to-dos are. You don't need to worry about that right now because you have dedicated this time, this 60 minutes, to you, your wellness. So let yourself enjoy it. Let yourself reap the benefits of that time. We have one more minute or less than a minute now as we 
try to navigate through those last breaths, last bit of discomfort that might be setting in now. I always like to try to really focus on the exhale, lengthening out the exhale can be so beneficial in helping you to relax more and to allow those final moments to be feel a little quicker. So if we start to release it, you can bring uh, the ankles back down, you can draw the knees in together and the hands to the kneecaps, making some very smooth rotations here. Massaging out that low back. Moving clockwise and then counterclockwise a few times. And as we move up from that supine position onto our side in the fetal position for a moment, just gently curling in the stretch out of the spine. We'll press the floor away and move up into a seated position. Now, in seated, quite often, what you might find um, is helpful, if you, especially if you have that sense of kind of falling backwards a little bit, uh, or having a lot of pulling in the lower back, what you could do is simply place a blanket underneath um, the very back portion of the sit bones. So not the entirety of the pelvis, but just the back. Um, having your blocks, your bolster handy, if um, you like to use them, we're going to come into a double pigeon here, or um, fire log pose as it's known in yin. So taking uh, the right shin first and bringing your kind of parallel to the edge of the mat, and then taking the opposite foot and placing it so the ankle lines up with the other knee. Now you may find that in this case, <laughs> this is early in the morning for me, uh, this hip is, tends to be the tighter one, so a little stiff, the knee is elevated, but more or less, my left ankle lines up with my right knee, my left knee lines up with my right ankle. If this is too much, you'll simply wanna come into cross-legged still going to get the benefit of the um, rotation in the hips, the stretch in those outer hips particularly as you come into cross-legged um, and again adjust with the blanket. I'm going to move mine out of the way. You could also use a block here and place underneath your knee to give it some extra support if you're feeling like there's a lot of pulling or are tugging on that knee. But for now, other option is to just remain nice and tall, or you could start to use those blocks to provide you with some support as you lean in, coming forward and allowing yourself to continue to surrender in a forward bend. So we started off with our back bend, opening the heart, opening the throat chakra, the heart chakra, even the solar plexus, as we have a lot of length through uh, the front body. Now, we're coming into flexion of the spine and a real targeted approach on the hips particularly. So this is going to, it might feel like there's not a lot of range as you're doing this. You may find there's a lot of discomfort as well. And that's normal. If you have to, uh, again, remember sharp pain is always a signal that you need to come out and come into a much more conservative position. You could even at any time go into a child's pose and 
kind of rest through the remainder of the pose on this side. Um, so really it's about listening to your body, always. Now, be also very attentive as you hold this, what's going on in the upper body. So you wanna kind of check in with your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, so that you continue to allow the, um, the surrender of softness because it trickles down. If you're really tense in your upper body, what's going to happen is you're not gonna breathe fully and that hindering of breath is going to cause your uh, major hip flexor, the psoas, to continue to stay tight. So when you breathe more fully, more relaxed, that hip flexor starts to soften and it starts to relax more. So we are in the last half here. We've got about two and a half minutes left of time. You may find that it is starting to, um, there's a little bit more give. And about the halfway mark is always a good time to explore a little bit more depth as you continue to hold your pose so that you can go from your readjustment back into softness, into stillness. Reminding yourself to tune into that breathing pattern. Can you breathe out longer than what you breathe in? So it might be helpful for you to count your inhale, the length of your inhale, and then see if you can at least match your exhale and maybe take it even longer than your exhale. Taking two more breaths here. Let your, yeah, let your exhale be really relaxing, really softening. Can you let that left leg get a little heavier on that exhale? And then slowly begin to make your way up. And as always, as we make our way up, it's always really slow to move. And as you extend the legs out, you can kind of give them a little bit of a shake here. Maybe even a little bit of massaging as you get that blood flow back in. You can bring the feet flat on the mat hands behind you as we lift up into a reverse table. So just lifting the hips, opening up the chest as you get some stretch, <clears throat> a little bit of extension before we come back into flexion on the other side. So this is where we're going to finish up the yin portion this morning as we finish on this side, taking the left shin across and then taking the right foot, right ankle over top or just above. So it's not directly on the knee joint, but it's just above it as we settle in here. So as you find your Settling in place. Once again, use your supports as needed. Stay tall if you need to. So if you feel that it's much easier for you to stay seated here, nice and tall, maybe the arms at your sides, um, turning the palms up can be real help to open up into your heart center making it easier for you to breathe and easier for you to relax through the chest and shoulders. So be sure to make those allowances and adjustments. And once again, tapping into that breath. So amazing. I 
know it feels intense as we pull, especially starting off cold as yin is truly intended to be. But believe me, as we move into the yang portion, it will feel really good. Really good to get the movement going, really good to have opened up um, the body so that you have greater mobility. within your body. So it is a really great way to deepen your yoga journey is through that quiet stillness. And if you're not the quiet still type, it's always a good signal that perhaps you need more of this, especially if you find yourself really resisting There's a saying in yoga that the pose that you dislike the most, the one that you avoid the most, is the one that you need the most. your body. Uh, you can move your props out of the way once again. Give those legs a little bit of massaging, increasing the blood flow. And from here we're going to come into a table position. So you can move onto all fours, uh, bringing some movement into the hips here as we gently circle them out, moving into clockwise rotations to increase that movement and then moving into a counterclockwise movement flow to massage even further. As we bring ourselves into a table, let's inhale, lifting up into cow and let's tuck the toes under as we do that, uh, stretching the soles of the Stretching the tops of the feet as we round into an angry cat. 
and let's do that again. Tuck the toes, inhale, lift the gaze, let the belly mount down and switch it up. So getting it into your own rhythm, your own flow of breath and movement here as we continue to gently massage out the spine, stretching it out. And as we come back to table, let's push back into wide angle child's pose and pressing those hips back, reaching up onto the pads of the fingers here as we add a little bit of swaying side to side as you start to reintroduce that movement into your hips, your shoulders. And as we come on back to table, Taking a big breath in as you reach up with the right arm, looking up toward that hand. Reach, reach through those fingertips and sliding that arm up right through, letting your right ear, uh, right shoulder come to the mat. Once again, slide it out. Breathe and reach it up. Look up, pushing the hip to the right a little bit. Exhale, slide through once again. As you surrender here, maybe you're able to open up that left arm, reaching up, taking it across the lower back and applying a gentle pressure to open up into the chest and shoulder. Reach it up once again and floating it down, grounding through that left hand as you slide out the right one, coming back to your table you realign here. Take a big inhale, reach up, uh, left arm extends, sliding the ears well away from your shoulders and reach it through as you surrender your left shoulder, left ear, pressing into that right hand, looking up past your right shoulder. Press into the right hand, slide at the left arm and reach it up once again. Looking up, spreading those fingers apart, and exhale, slide through. Pressing into the hand, looking up, little rotation in the waist, and press it into your hand once again. Bring it back to your table position. As you press through, I re just realized I forgot to add that right side. So let's take it through again. Hold it up, look up. Take the arm, bring it across your lower back and then press into the arm as you look up. Relax your jaw, soften your face and bring it back up. Now we come back to our table, walking the hands away to move into either a half plank or a full plank, firing up those legs, pulling the navel to the spine, lifting the hips way up and back as you bring the heels towards your body. So from here, take up a few moments to really get yourself adjusted where you feel the hips lifting up really nice and high and bringing your right hand to the center top of your mat. Take your left hand and see where you can reach the lowest point you can reach on your right leg. So maybe that's up here somewhere, your knee, your calf, or all the way to the heel perhaps and looking under your right arm, right up toward the ceiling. And then let it go, come on back to your downward dog. Readjust, feel yourself, try to protract the shoulders or the shoulder blades toward the spine and then retract them away and hold them there, bringing left hand to the middle, right hand to the lowest point if you can reach, looking under your left arm and really using the leverage of the grip to twist a little bit deeper. As you release that, Come back to your downward dog. Reach up and back with your right leg. Bend at the knee and turn your hip to open it up, letting your foot draw down 
uh, really opening up here, look under your left arm and then reach it up and back and draw the knee in to step that foot to the top of your mat. So take a moment here to adjust as you lengthen and bring that back knee to the floor. Reach it up, inhale, open up, cactus the arms, reach them up tall again, bringing your left hand under the shoulder, right arm reaches up, take it back, lifting your left foot, reaching for it as you look back behind you. As you release that, tuck those back toes under, step it back, downward dog, inhale forward into a plank or a half plank, lower down to chaturanga, and scoop it up into your upward dog. So letting your hips weigh heavily here, beautiful extension, breathe in and then breathe out, take it back into downward dog once again. Here we lift the left leg up, reach it way back, press your belly towards your thigh, bend your knee, open up. So start that rotation, pointing the knee toward the ceiling, looking under your right arm, keep pushing the hips up and back, and square the, the hips, and step that foot through to the top of your mat. So once again, we bring that back knee down, foot flattens, Reach it up, inhale. Oh, beautiful length in the front of the body. Oh, real heart opener here. As you continue to press the backs of the hands back, bringing your right hand under the shoulder, reach it up and back. Take a hold of that foot and bring it in, looking back. Keep drawing your foot closer and closer. Looking toward it and then let it go. Tuck the toes under and lift that back knee up and step the foot to the top of your mat. Inhaling halfway up, exhaling to fold. Bring hands to opposite elbows. If it feels good or just let your arms dangle as you create a sway motion. A little twisty side to side. You can feel really nice to the spine at this point and then release it, let the arms dangle, soften the knees, and slowly unroll yourself to come all the way to standing in mountain pose. Breathing in to open it up, look up and back, palms come together, exhale, swan dive down into forward fold. Inhale, come on up halfway. As you exhale, bring your right foot back and take a moment here as you really get up on the ball of that back foot, pressing through the heel still, and then straighten your front leg. As you straighten the front leg, keep it tending your back heel toward the floor, but try to have your foot far enough back so the heel is not on the floor. If you need your blocks here, you can have them underneath your hands. I'm up on my fingertips. And as you straighten that front leg, press through the front heel as you lift the toes up off the mat on that front foot. And as you continue to hold this, maybe you're able to bring one arm up. Maybe you're able to bring both arms up as you continue to hold the balance here. As you bring the hands back down again, bend that knee, bring the back heel to the floor, walking your left hand to the inside of the left foot. Reach up and look up. Open up through the heart, bring that back or the top arm behind you once again, just like we did in our earlier threading of the needle. Bring that arm back up, bring it right by your ear and then circle it down, pivoting to bring the hands to the center here. Take an inhale, flatten the back, and from here, see if you can hold on to maybe the shins to get a really nice flat back. Breathe in, get a little longer. Maybe hands are on your thighs or under your shoulders. Send your tailbone back. As you exhale, start to hinge even more. See if you can reach the hands, maybe to your ankles, maybe to your big toes for that yogi lock. Breathe in, flatten the back as much as you can. Breathe out, pick up those toes or ankles as you bend the elbows and allow the head to draw closer and closer to your yoga mat. 
Take an inhale, flatten the back. And as you exhale, we're simply going to turn the other toes, so the back toes, to the top edge, the short edge of the mat to come into that side angle in this direction. So you may have to adjust the feet, maybe take them a little bit wider. Once again, you can take that top arm, bring it across your lower back, looking up, relaxing the jaw, softening up the face, maintaining a really good bend in that um, left, right foot in this instance. As you reach it up again, take the arm right by your ear and circle it all the way down. Pick it on the ball of that back foot and step it in to meet the other foot. So you should be at the other end of your mat now. Inhale with a flattened back. Exhale, fold. And reverse swan dive. Open up those arms. Take a big stretch as you lean back. Exhale, hands to the heart and come on down into a chair pose. So as you sink nice and low in chair, Feel yourself really tucking through the tailbone and getting the hips low, keeping your heart lifted, nice and broad as well. It's kind of like your collarbone or smiling here. Take an inhale. As you exhale, bring your left elbow outside your right leg and press those palms together, looking up past your top shoulder. Maybe you're able to open up the arms as well, looking up to that top half. Keep pulling your Left knee back so it's not coming in front of your right one. Bring the palms together, unwind. Inhale here, sing here a little longer, and take your other elbow, right elbow inside your left leg. And the same thing, make sure that your right knee is not coming in front of the left one. Lengthen, reach through those fingertips in both directions, looking up if you can, relaxing your jaw. Breathe. Bring those hands together and unwind back to your chair. Sink a little lower. Bring the hands down and lift it up. Wrap the arms around the backs of the legs. Give yourself a squeeze and a hug. Uh, breathe out. Squeeze it a little bit more. And as you bring hands to the shins, flatten the back to inhale. And as you exhale, plant the hands down, step back with the left foot. So taking that left foot way back as we come into a nice long reach through the head. As you continue to hold, bring the arms right by the ears here, holding that nice low lunge, lots of strength and power in those legs. And as you bring your that right hand to the inside of the left leg, bring it back to side angle, just like we were earlier. From here, we wrap that top arm around. Maybe this time you're able to take it into a bind as you continue to look up. Can you bind and straighten that front leg? Keep turning your chest upward. Maybe we open up the arms into triangle pose. And bring the hands to the heart as we press them right at the sternum and then lifting up to standing nice and tall. From here, bring those arms long, sinking into your warrior two. Bring the back hand alongside that back leg as we reverse that warrior, reaching through the fingertips and really sinking low in that front leg if you can. So you might have to bring your back foot a little further away, looking up past that top elbow to really Extend, breathe into this rib cage as you make more space into it. Take it back to your warrior two. And from here, taking it to side angle, taking that top arm right alongside the ear. Breathe in and breathe out. Bring the hands all the way down to the mat. And as we just turn the front toes a little bit diagonally, sinking into a little bit more of a squat, maybe even coming down into a surfer's lunge. So bringing the toes on the back leg or the front leg, whichever, the long leg, let's put it that way, as we come into the squat 
surfers lunge, pressing the palms together. Maybe you keep the hands down on the mat. And as you keep the hands wherever it's comfortable for you, can you ooh, reverse that and take it to the other side? Working your way into Skandasana here. Surfer's lunge. Those other toes are pointed straight up as you press through the heel. Try to lift your heart as much as you can as well. And as we carefully bring the toes of the long leg down, bring your left hand along the inside of that leg. Ah, from here, we press it up to warrior two, reversing that warrior as we bring the hand down the leg, reach, reach through those fingertips, keep pressing that front knee open toward the baby toe, breathe in, hold maybe the back hand, works its way down the back leg a little bit more, and then take it back. Warrior two to triangle, trikonasana, as we have the hands to the heart. So we're doing it in reverse on this side. We'll see how good my brain is at maintaining the order as we reach the arms nice and long. From here, we take that top arm, wrap it around the lower back, reaching through the leg, starting off as bound triangle, into bound side angle, and releasing, taking that top arm along, reaching for the sky, then alongside the ear, circling it all the way down, pivot on the ball of that back foot, step it to meet the front foot. Inhale halfway up, exhale to fold. Reverse swan dive and bring the palms together, bring them all the way down to the heart. So as we ground in mountain pose and continue to have the body in a nice tall alignment, engaging through the bandhas, feeling more mobility in the hips now especially. And as you remain stacked here, core on, bandhas engaged, we scoop up the right knee and bring it into the body. From here, as you continue to maintain that squeeze, that hold, perhaps you're able to Maybe you stay here. Maybe you take a hold of the back of the leg and straighten the leg, or maybe you're able to grab your big toe for that yogi lock as we extend the leg here. Perhaps taking your right arm out to the side, maybe bringing it back, maybe taking your gaze over there as well. So as we continue to hold on, and play around with that balance. We bring the hand back to the hip. We bend the knee again, and then we release it back down. So one more side to go. Come on back, realign yourself. Take a big breath, roll the shoulders down and away. Reach through the crown of the head, fire up the core, and let's inhale those arms up. Exhale, bring the hands to the heart, and then scoop up your left knee. So one side, usually a little trickier than the other. So again, you know your options. You can stay here, hold on to your knee. I don't know what it is, but this morning I am swaying back and forth, just like being on a ship. From here, as you continue, I'm going to turn this way. I need something to focus on here instead of a blank wall. So as you continue to hold on, maybe you reach, straighten the leg, maybe you reach for the big toe, yogi lock, hand can stay on the hip, arm can extend to the side, or maybe it extends back behind you. Gaze can follow the hand, perhaps, or just keeping it here. And as you're ready to make your way out, you can bring the hand back to the hip and gradually bring yourself back to standing. Take those shoulders, roll them well away. Bring the feet a little wider. Add a little sway here from side to side, which just helps to release any 
tension that might creep up because there's so much concentration that goes on while you are in a balanced pose. So from here, let's take the arms up, inhale, lifting up a little back bend, exhale, and ah, forward fold. Breathing in, flatten and lengthen. As you breathe out, bring the hands to the mat, bending the knees as much as you need to. You can either walk or hop to bring the feet back. Lowering down the chaturanga, inhale into your upward dog, exhale into your downward facing dog. From here, we bring the knees to the mat. Flatten the tops of your feet as you walk the hands in to come into this tall alignment here. So stay, just as we did in mountain pose, only from the knees, we take the hands to the lower back. So you're bringing the heel of your hand to the sides of the sacrum, so right at the back of your pelvis, and you are going to just draw the elbows toward each other. Continue to create length in the front of the body as you gradually start to lean back into camel, making sure your hips remain above the knees. So it's all about opening up the front, the interior side of your spine. So keeping the neck long, your breath smooth, hips stacked. Take another inhale here. As you slowly lift the head, tuck the chin in, and bring the hands to the thighs as we create some rounding here, sliding hands towards your knees. Slowly unroll and come on back to standing nice and tall. So options here is if you, you can do exactly the one that we just did. You could use your blocks if you have them and place them just alongside the ankles and you can keep the tops of the feet down or tuck your toes under whichever feels better. And from here, keeping the body very square, shoulders pointing forward, heart shining forward and upward as we take a big inhale, circling the right arm without twisting the body to look for the block on the right side. Inhaling to circle the left arm, reaching it back, keeping it melting forward as you let yourself maybe get a little bit deeper this time. Breathe, keep those hips moving forward and then slowly lifting up, tuck the chin in and yeah, bring yourself into a nice classical child's pose. Slowly on a roll, come on back up again. And this is where we finish this one up. You can either use your hands to the back, blocks by your ankles, or maybe explore tucking the toes under. If that, if, um, you know, if that's too conservative, you could have the feet flat still. But let, I'm gonna try this one. It's kind of in between the block and the feet being flat. So as I maintain my nice tall alignment, I'm going to take a big breath in, circling a little right arm with that twisting, looking for my right heel, and then looking for my left heel as I remain in that beautiful back foot. Breathing while I'm here. So make sure you don't hold your breath while you're in this pose. slowly release ah, tuck the chin and come on back to your classical child's pose ah, round in the back tucking to bring your forehead towards your knees breathing into that back ah, and then slowly unroll come on onto your back we're bringing ourselves into that supine final position as we bring the knees in, give yourself a nice hug, a little bit of the back massaging. And from here, we're going to come into a spinal twist. 
So you can keep your knees side by side. I like to make them a little bit deeper, so I'm going to cross my left leg on top of my right one, opening up the arms, hips slide to the right. So even if your knees are stacked, um, I mean to the left, even if your knees are just side by side, just slide your hips a little bit over to the left side and then let your knees fall to the right. Looking to the left, closing your eye, breathing into that beautiful surrender. Uh, this is just so soothing to the nervous system. It's, it creates a very yummy kind of release and surrender as we let those legs remain heavy and heavier you can feel just how good that is ah, feels so delicious after starting off stiff and cold in our yin getting nice and warm in our yawn, and now just letting it all come together. So you bring the knees back up, reposition your spine into center. You can bring your left foot to the center of the mat, crossing the right leg, hips go to the right, and tip knees to the left and look to the right. Closing the eyes once again to just fully Surrender into it, enjoy it, let it feel good. So good. Check in with your breathing once again. Relax those facial muscles and just let it trickle all the way down through the whole body. As you bring the legs back up again carefully, unwind them, straighten out your spine and stretch out the legs to make your way into our Shavasana. Stretching the legs, letting them open bringing your arms a comfortable distance away from the body and as you move let the tongue the tip of it just rest behind the top front teeth relaxing all those facial features and once again gradually with your exhale let your body relax muscle group by muscle group the entire way through. Let it remain heavier and heavier, feeling the pull of gravity of the earth. Breath is soft. There's no struggle to it. It's just effortless. And as you continue to lay and rest for a few more moments, I will once again bring and leave you with a thought for the day. As I reach in here to grab a card, ah, which today is, I am a magnet for miracles. When I change my consciousness and forgive, those I need to forgive 
healing miracles occur. It is so true. Forgiveness can be one of the most challenging things for us mere mortals, but it is so transformative. Sometimes it comes right back to forgiveness of oneself. Maybe just being a little kinder, a little easier in ourselves. And I hope that your journey today on the mat is appreciated by yourself for the time that you've invested today. So as you start to bring yourself back to life, holding on to that thought of forgiveness and healing, just start to move gently. <laughs> Let your breath gradually inspire some bigger and bigger movement. As you stretch out, lengthen out, maybe massage out your back a little bit, rocking from side to side, keeping the eyes gently closed. And eventually making your way back up to a seated position. Whenever you get there, you can bring your hands to your heart and just place them over your heart. <clears throat> Feeling full of gratitude, appreciation for this dedicated time for you and the more you benefit from it, the more others around you benefit as well. So as we bring our practice to a close, bring the hands to prayer and namaste.